Next up is the spline pilot. What is a spline pilot, you may ask? And I would say, well, Google it. If you Google it, spline pilot, you know what you will get? You will get that picture. So, talk about a circular reference. The spline pilot is in millimeters, so before you start this, when you create the file, make sure you change from inches to millimeters. Okay, make sure you save it to your U drive. So, progressively a little bit more difficult, little, and diff by difficult, I just mean there's more features, okay? So you have to sort of dumb down the whole part in your mind and look at it a piece at a time. Where do you start? Where do you start building? Okay, a lot of times parts are, are parts are created from the bottom up, or from maybe from one big feature, you know, and then add on. In this case, we have like this big vertical cylinder, and all the other features are added or subtracted from it. So the first thing we're going to build, the easiest thing, uh, is to build the cylinder and then we add the other features to it or we subtract the center hole away so let's just let's start that way okay notice it does say metric in here so we know it's in metric and uh, and also notice all the numbers are integers get a good look at it okay notice right here where it shows uh, 16 okay and it, what is it measuring? It's not measuring from this point to that point. It's measuring from this line to that line. So what it's telling you is this feature, those sides are parallel, okay, 16 millimeters apart. If they weren't parallel, they would give an angle between the two lines, as in this one here, 55 degrees between this line and that line, okay. Dimensions are typically measuring to lines, not to points. So this, I call this feature in the inside the chicken foot because someone, I said, well, chickens have, have, uh, have three toes, right? And then a farmer's uh, daughter told me one day, no, like chickens, like other birds, they have, I think they have four toes. Uh, one's in the back, whatever, perching birds do. I don't know if that's the case, but uh, someone else said, no, it looks more like a, an elephant foot to me. And I said, no, that's crazy. Everybody knows elephants have four toes, not three. Anyway, it's the hole on the inside. There's three features. Uh, they don't dimension every feature, so we can assume that they're equally the same. In other words, the sides are 16 millimeters apart. The outside, now when it points to a line and says radius, we know that that line is an arc. It may sometimes look fairly straight, but it's an arc. 88 millimeters for the whole diameter here. If it's 55 degrees from this edge to that edge, it's also 55 degrees from the center of this toe to the center of that toe and to the center of the other toe from this center, right? Um, okay, that's good enough. We have, uh, this thing is 68 inches, 68 millimeters tall and 88 diameter so let's shrink this back down again i don't know if you can read this on your screen but you know what part we're talking about at least and you can bring up a bigger representation on your own screen or print it out so you have it okay so we're going to start off with an extrude on the horizontal plane the circle from the center is a center circle and the diameter is 88. So do you want to just extrude that and, and then start with the next hole or are we going to do the inside features? Let's do the inside. Well, let's just, let's just do that one. Okay, we can't mess it up. 68. Nice thing is when we go back into this one, um, our, our our dimension should be sized. So let's extrude. Let's go on the base. I get that again, the horizontal plane. And the center toe will be in the center here. So that will be created with a an arc. And I was careful. This is a diameter, a radius of 36, so it's a diameter of 72. And I was careful to put that 
make sure that you have this in concentric so if you didn't click it on the center there make it make sure you you know draw it there so it it behooves you to put it in the, where you want it to begin with to save uh, you, you the hassle of putting other dimensions in okay we're gonna put some other lines in here we're gonna put in the sides of the top hole and I didn't get that one horizontal and then we're gonna have some other sides here now these sides do not go through the center point notice on the drawing here they do not go through the center point they go but they are parallel so we can put that constraint in there and you could just do one of these toes like maybe the center one and do a pattern of two one there you can only do a pattern to one side so you could do a pattern of two and then mirror it to the other side or if you want to sketch them all out if you're good at sketching or you just want to practice your sketching do all the sketching the center hole is 52 diameter okay let's trim off some lines well let's make some uh, I want to do a vertical line here make that for oops don't hit the midpoint of the line or the end point of the line obviously I guess somewhere in between so apply that one make sure I guess I'll make sure that one's okay let's make them parallel let's make this parallel to that apply let's make that parallel to that apply that okay once they're parallel we can do a distance between you know before we do a distance between let's do some trimming I find that if you put diameter or if you put dimensions on and then you start trimming lines a lot of times you end up trimming the dimension off too so let's trim some lines so far so good now let's put some dimensions on this from here to here should be 16 from here to here You gotta escape out of that last command there. Double click. My mushy keyboard does not always pick up my keystrokes. Oop. Yeah, that looks kind of weird, huh? So we gotta be able to move this thing around, right? It looks like it made it tangent down there I'm gonna back that up I'm gonna draw a line from the midpoint to the center and from the midpoint here to the center and I want to get these things straightened up I'm gonna do a parallel from that line to that line and apply it and a parallel from that line to that line and apply it and that didn't get okay I'm gonna delete that because it didn't snap to the center point the midpoint as I meant it to do let's try it again midpoint center point okay now parallel didn't snap that one didn't either let's see if I can draw that again midpoint to center let's get rid of this one I thought I snapped that to the midpoint okay let's see if it stays there there now it stayed you gotta watch your cursor carefully you know what I think I might have to go 
there's more than way to do it let's one way to do it let's go from here to here this will center it we'll make this eight millimeters from there to there they are parallel and a distance between I don't know why it wasn't snapping to midpoint Let's go parallel again. And distance of eight. Oh. And let's do a distance of 16. I'm blaming it on the mushy keyboard. It might be just that I'm going too fast and the computer's lagging a little bit. Okay, let's put a distance. Uh, see, that says 8 degrees. That's not 8 millimeters. Let's make those parallel again. It didn't make them parallel. What am I doing? This line, that line. There we go. Let's apply it. Cancel. Okay, now distance. Distance of 8. Distance of 8. There we go. Now I don't want these to extrude. And I don't know a fast way to make them into reference lines except by going to Menu, Tools, Convert to Reference, this and this and let's put an angle between so from here to we can go to this we can go to this doesn't really matter it's always going to be 55 degrees from here to here try that again from here here swing it over there 55 degrees and we gotta center that front one the top one too right so from here to here is eight and then from here here. Come on. Oh, that's got to be vertical. There we go. And now we can go from here to here. From this arc I can tell that that center is not on the center anymore so let's go uh, coincident this to center apply there we go and that work Sketch is fully cons fully defined. Whew. Yeah, I mean, it's probably easier to put one of these in here and do a pattern 55 degrees apart and then mirror that second one to that side. Yeah, I'd probably be a lot faster at it. Let's extrude it up through. Looks like I did this thing the wrong direction um, is that gonna mess me up a little bit um, my parts uh, backwards 
you know what? Let me see if I can turn it around. Double click on the coordinate system. Rotate it 180 degrees. Say OK. Ha ha! If you are wondering um, how to, if you, if you created your model in the wrong orientation by creating the first sketch on the wrong plane, that's how you do it. You, you highlight the coordinate system, double click. Now, I have to admit, when I did this in version 11, sometimes it would rotate it, sometimes it would only rotate the coordinate system. So I'm a little confused in, in why it still works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. It has to do whether the part is, uh, is linked to that coordinate system or not. Okay, so we got it turned around, that's good. Otherwise, every time I hit uh, isometric, it'd be turned 180 degrees. Okay, next we're going to do what I call the pot handle, which is this feature and the back feature too. It's going to be one sketch because they're on the same plane. So let's go to extrude. I'm going to do everything from the bottom plane. Okay, if you pick a face that has uh, that has cuts on it. Notice every time I pick this thing, it creates a new coordinate system. See the coordinate system is, is not pointing. This way should be like the Y coordinate and this should be X. And when you pick an, a round plane, it looks for some straight line in there and tries to put a new coordinate system on. You don't want the new front. I want the front, you know, facing my left side here. I don't want the front to be changed 35 degrees or something. So to keep that from happening, pick the same datum plane. Notice the same coordinate system. Although it might rotate it upside down for me, I can work with that. My handle is on this side. Okay, so the handle is a diameter of radius, it says, of, does this say 58? Yeah, 58. So from the center, oops, I didn't hit the center. From the center, watch your watch your little sketch origin there. You want to make sure it hits coordinate. Should be concentric. So that says 58 radius times two. There we go. Uh, and we want uh, we want the inside circle because if we just create this, we're going to create a solid disk. Uh, we don't want a solid disc. We want a disc with a hole in it. So let's start at the center again. And we want to make this same circle. Uh, which is 52 diameter. And it'll create a solid from the outside and a hole on the inside. And then the pot handle up here. Let's slide this down a little bit. We're going to have a circle here, another circle inside it, and the outside one is 24, right? Radius 12 or 24 diameter. And the inside one is 12. And I did create these on that line there. So they are, it, is, it is constrained left to right in the right spot. There is also an arc from somewhere about here to here. And somewhere about here to here. And these arcs are equal radius. And apply that and they are a 14 radius when, I, when this shrinks it should move it in or maybe 14 radius and the distance from the center of this arc to the center here 
or from here. Yes, oops, I'll get it. Highlight, click on the center. 82, 82 is the distance. Make sure that thing's stuck there. I'm going to highlight that. Highlight that. Wait for the dot to appear. Click on the dot. Try and move it. If it slides side to side, then it wasn't constrained. Okay. And then I want to cut off these two features on either side. So I'm going to make a rectangle. Click let up. Okay. And drop. Okay. Um, you know what? I did that inside circle wrong, didn't I? I'm sure you probably caught me on that already. This is supposed to be the outside circle of 88. That's where the pot handle is. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to do some trimming. Uh, trim, 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 trim and trim this and trim that and trim that and trim that. Now when I trim those I might have lost some constraints. So just to be safe, well let's put in some things. We know from here to here. Okay when I click on this notice the constraints. Um, I might be or just click and drag, see what we get. Okay. So that's distance. We got to get in there. So let's go from this line to this line. And it should be 48. Four, eight, enter. Is it symmetric? If it's not symmetric, I can go from this line to here and put in 24. It looks like it already was. It didn't seem to hurt it though. Okay, sketch is partially defined. What is it missing? I don't like leaving it though. Oh, let's try trimming. Trim that, trim that. Still says partially defined. Oh, maybe that's not. Oh, maybe that's not tangent there. Okay, let's try tangent. Let's make this tangent to that. Okay, let's make that tangent to that. Let's make that tangent to that. That to that. Now it's fully defined. Okay, I must have had one arc that wasn't fully constrained. And let's finish it. And it starts at 48 up from the bottom. 48. And it goes to 58 because it's 10 thick. 48, 58. And we want to unite that. Now what I call the three fingers here. Looking at these fingers, we see that from center to center, they're 35 degrees apart. In each finger, the sides are 20 degrees apart, which means the sides are not parallel. So how many different ways could we do this? Okay, let me just talk you through a couple ways. Well, pause the video at this point and think of some ways that you could create this. Okay, hopefully you've unpaused it and you're back now. When I did this in class live, I would just, I'd pick students and I'd say, okay, start it out, how do we start this? And some people would say, well, we would draw a shape on this plane. And we would draw a, a bent rectangle. Okay, so basically the bottom of all these three part, these three faces. 
I said, okay, that's the bent rectangle method, method or the bent French fry method. And they would say, okay, and they we draw a rectangle there. And then we'd extrude it upward, and then maybe we'd chamfer the front half off, and then it would be a bent rectangle that was a rectangular, or that was triangular, bent rectangle. And then we'd cut off the insides. Okay, that's a lot of sketching. So what is the easiest way to do this with the minimal amount of sketching? That would probably be to do a sketch, which would turn into revolve on the center of the part the vertical okay we are now on the vertical center and we would draw over here a triangle now from what it looks what it looks in the book and what it actually is is different uh, the book gives you a a radius of 49 to the outside edge okay from the center and this is a radius of 44 so from 44 to 48 I think it's 44 88 yeah 44 to 49 sorry is 5 millimeters so this triangle on the bottom is 5 millimeters and it's 10 millimeters here so this looks like an equilateral triangle equal sides but it's not it's actually 10 here 5 there all I can say is the dimensions if we always go with the dimensions the drawing can be wrong, but the dimensions are assumed to be right. So, we're going to make this thing 10 high. And we're going to make it 5 wide. And then we are going to dimension it to the center here. And that should be half of the diameter, which is 44. And to the bottom, should be 58. So there's my sketch very simple sketch right you'd all agree revolve it if we take this part and revolve it about the center vector put your cursor on the arrowhead till it highlights and it's 20 degrees wide so we would start off with the angle at minus 10 because we're in the center to positive 10 Sorry, minus 10, tab it, to positive 10. Like I said, it's going to show different than what the drawing does, but the drawing is wrong. And we're going to say uh, Boolean of Unite, right? And then we can do a pattern. We can do a pattern of two. Um... 35 degrees apart you know say your boss was giving you this problem and you had to do it and he says okay these little uh, fingers out here are gonna remain the same size or maybe they're gonna change size yeah they're gonna change size and they may change angles too but they're always gonna be three of them but maybe not three of them and you go okay I don't want to sketch three fingers if they're all gonna be changing if they're always going to be the same size though, but there may be a different number, a different size, then I want to create one and I want to multiply it, right? <sighs> because I can, I can edit a feature easy enough, but I don't want to re-sketch it every time. It's not lighting up the whole thing here. Okay, we're going to do it about the center vector, right? That's the center vector. We're going to go pitch angle count and pitch right count is one oh count is two that one two circular good about this 35 degrees apart apply and now since I'm in this thing it's probably just as easy to pick this one as to mirror it so I'm just gonna pick this one all over again 
but we're going to go negative degrees, negative 35, and say OK. Here we go. Last one. OK. Answer this question. Is that feature created with an extrude command or a revolve command? Pause the movie and think about it. Okay, hopefully you're back. When you see the arcs on that feature, you tend to think that's a revolve. Now, there may be a way to make that with revolve. I think I've done it before, but not in one move. Okay, it's an extrude with one move. It's not a revolve with one move. So it's an extrude. So if we go to extrude on the center vertical plane, I think I picked the wrong. No, nope, it's over here. Or is it over there? Control no, function F8. Okay, here's the handle sticking out toward us, and this is on the right hand side. Uh, there's been some debate of whether there's two of these features or one of these features. The answer is you could argue both ways. You could say, well, the part looks completely symmetrical, so I think there's one of those triangular features on either side. Another person should say, if there's one on either side, they should put a note and say there's two of them. So I'm just going to draw one because I can justify it. So I'm going to draw a profile of a triangle. And then I'm going to define that triangle. Now it says 12 millimeters from the outside surface of the cylinder to the outside here, okay? But really what I need is a distance from, from this point to this vector, right? And that would be 44 diameter to the outside of the cylinder plus 12. So this is 44 plus 12. From the bottom to the top of that is 32. Right? The angle from here to here, uh, let's see, they're going from the horizontal. There we go. They want the angle from here to this from here to here, but over here, right? 120. Yeah, always better to do it that way. Now that's sticking out the bottom. We don't want that. So let's move it. Now the problem is if you make this too narrow, we didn't, we're not told how, how deep this triangle has to go. We know it has to be deep enough that it doesn't come out of the cylinder before it leaves the cylinder. I mean, it, it you know, okay. Um, if we go too narrow, then it's going to pop out of the cylinder before it gets wide enough. Because we're in the center here and we're going to extrude it both directions. So I'm just going to, I'm going to guess, I'm going to say, well, let's just, let's just not make it go past the bottom. See if that works. But we do have to put a dimension on here. So we're just going to leave that dimension. As long as it's double click 17. Enter. There. We do want to constrain it. And it's inside the wall so it won't fill up the hole. It won't hit that hole on the inside. We're going to finish it. How wide is this thing? 36 wide. So we're going to go it's 36, so minus 18 and plus 18. And unite it. 
There we go. If you want to take a picture of this for like a final report, you might want to right click on this and go, no, let's go over here and say hide the datum plane, okay? And any sketches, you might want to hide the sketches too.